as 2023 is about to wrap up, I think it's time to give an update as to the state of filmmaking with phones. In this video, I want to primarily talk about ProRes capabilities, and obviously I've already made a bunch of videos on the iPhone, but I want to talk about an update that I got access to on one of the favorite apps for Android that now give it to ProRes. And before we dive in, I just want to say a quick thank you to all the amazing support from this year. This channel has grown so much. So many of you have joined as subscribers, as well as supporting me through my various products, like this iPhone SSD grip. And as of a couple of weeks, ago we crossed over a thousand of you who have joined my various courses for learning DaVinci Resolve as well as one of my recent favorites where I teach you guys how to get the most out of your iPhone camera. Seriously I could not continue to make these videos without you all. Thank you so much and if you're interested in any of the things I just mentioned of course they're in the top links in the description below. But anyways back to the phones. So I'll run through the iPhone very quickly, but of course this year we got a huge update with the iPhone 15 Pro, considering it now has USB Type-C on the bottom port, which gives us access to plug-in SSDs like you see here. So now when I go into my camera, I have a nice little USB-C icon right there. And this allows me to record Apple ProRes logs straight to the hard drive and gives me up to 4K60 in that ProRes Apple log, which is pretty incredible. So where is the state of Android? Now the stock camera apps out there, there are some good ones, some bad, and I'm actually using a two-year-old Pixel 6 Pro here. And I actually did a video on this app, I think a year or two ago at this point, called Motion Cam. There's a free version and a paid version. Motion Cam Pro is gonna be the one I'm gonna be showing off today. And in the past, I showed off how it was able to use raw DNG, which captures an incredible high fidelity image straight off the sensor but the workflow to get a raw DNG to kind of like edit and color grade can be kind of cumbersome you got to like convert it to DNG and then get it to a computer and working with the files was kind of buggy and stuff but the developers of motion cam actually gave me an early access into not even the beta but the alpha version of what is uh, going to be coming. And at the time of this video, I don't know where this stage is. You should follow their Discord or their website to check out for updates. But I do want to throw a disclaimer out that anything you see in this video may slightly change. If it shows it's buggy here, it's because this is an alpha, which comes before even a public beta. And so it's definitely not public release. But that being said, I gotta say, this is one of the more stable alpha builds that I've seen. So instead of going under the raw video tab, we're going to see a new tab for MC raw log video. As you can see, we're not met with an incredibly complex user interface here. It's, it's pretty basic. We have some basic exposure stuff here. You also get a nice little histogram here and it tells you if you are uh, clipping your highlights, which is why my sweatshirt is uh, marked red there. Now, one thing that was kind of debated in the comments of my last video from a while ago is whether or not you could record to an SSD. And the verbiage on that is very specific because yes, you can take the files and put them onto an SSD, but I don't believe I could record straight to the SSD. So it would still go to your internal storage first, which considering this is 128 gig on raw DNG, it filled up very fast. And so now if I go to set my path recording here. Yeah, I don't believe I'm able to view any external drives. At least at the time of this recording, it looks like you still can't record straight to an SSD, unfortunately. Still though, using this app, you get a lot of the benefits like we did on raw DNG, which I like because you can access the full sensor. So on this different resolution list here, you can see a bunch of different resolutions like your standard 4K options. But I like to choose full sensor because to me that gives essentially an open gate. And so if you're filming for like vertical and horizontal, you can get a lot more, I mean, you get access to the full sensor readout. If you find that while using this app, it's like lagging or dropping frames, then you may need to crop into various different resolutions. But if your phone can handle it, it's a great option. And then here's the under new video codec. We have our HEVC 10-bit, 8-bit, but now we also have our ProRes option. And it does look like you get the various flavors of ProRes. So we have ProRes Proxy, ProRes, ProRes LT, and ProRes LHQ. 
Uh, most of the time I stick to ProRes LT. That just seems to be honestly the best balance of file sizes and quality for me. And you can choose your audio input. So you, you get access to multiple internal mics. Unfortunately, they're not labeled as of right now, which one. So I don't know which one's like the front facing or rear facing. But then after resolution stuff, we're gonna move on to frame rates. Now, depending which phone you're using, it will actually tell you which frame rates your phone is supported. And then they list unsupported frame rates as well. Now I've tried shooting at 24 on my Pixel 6 Pro, but I think it's pretty much locked to 30 because no matter what I film at, it will always do 30. And a lot of times I even tried 60, but it still put the clips at 30. So I'm gonna try on this new build to keep it at 60, cause I would love, see, and yeah. So even when I choose 60 up here, it still says 29.99 right there. So I don't know if this phone is capable of doing uh, open gate 4K 60, uh, so I guess I'll keep it at 30. Here's a setting that I think a lot of people will like. So now it's gonna give us the option to save gyro data. So if you're a fan of gyro flow, that is huge because that's gonna help a ton with stabilization. So then if you may not wanna get that crazy warp stabilizer going, you can have true gyro data, uh, which I'm very interested to see if that breeds a lot better stability results if you don't have something like a gimbal. And they even have DOF adapter uh, options. So I could use the new B-Script DOF adapter Mark III uh, and actually utilize that with this. So hmm. I've already done a crazy iPhone rig build, but do you want to see an Android version where I use this app and plug in big lenses and stuff? Let me know in the comments below. So that's taking a look at the app, but what does the sample footage look like? <laughs> After using motion cam on Android, honestly, I'm very excited for this to get to the final release stages because it was basically impossible to convince anyone of the practicality around shooting raw DNG. It just makes almost no sense unless you are a diehard like film nerd or tech nerd that you're okay with that crazy workflow. But using this third party app that only costs like six bucks one time, as long as you have a decently up-to-date phone, I think the only thing that killed this experience for me is the fact that I have a pretty decently older phone at this point to where it really drops frames even at cropped to regular 4K ProRes proxy just doesn't have the CPU, GPU, RAM capabilities as I'm sure some of the newer phones. So I think I may try to get my hands on a newer phone and do an updated video on this. Hit the like button if you'd like to see that. But in terms of the actual image I was able to get out of this, barring any dropped frames you may have seen, it looks really good. Now obviously Apple worked with Blackmagic to directly integrate Apple Log into Resolve and so converting to a consistently good image is literally one or two clicks away. And with the iPhone's popularity, every creator has made conversion LUTs and look LUTs and style LUTs. So again, it makes grading that log image that much easier for the iPhone. But I really think that motion cam and ProRes uh, with its log capabilities on the Android will become more popular and allow Android users to get an amazing film look out of their Android phone. So if you want to learn more about motion cam and when these updates may possibly come out, again, check the links in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.